I'll start uh, talking about an uh, impressive thing doing, doing, being done by, with wood. Uh, Cherapunji is a town in India, and in, it's in a place where the, the life is ruled by the, by the monsoons. It rains so, so much in that part of the world that uh, they have problems in the rainy season to reach to the, to the other side of the rivers. And when they bring, build bridges, the, the water is so strong that uh, it washes, it's washed, away, uh, washed out by, by, the, by the water. So they had to, to invent some system to build bridges. And they, what they did, what they did hundreds of years ago, was to use uh, natural, natural materials, especially the, a tree called a ficus elastica that has a very strong root system that helps it uh, fight against erosion. And it has a secondary system of roots uh, higher up the trunk that uh, they could make them grow in the direction they wanted by guiding them with uh, hollowed out trunks. And uh, using de de in decades of, in some years, in uh, they could, I'm going, uh, <laughs> sorry. They guide the roots to grow straight to the other side of the river bank. So they could uh, use the, the betel nut trunks, hollowed that out, and the, the roots were growing, intertwining between them when they were growing. When they reached the, the other side of the river bank, the roots were allowed to, to have root in the, in the ground, and so they became bridges. And this, this process uh, takes decades, a decade or so, some, some, something like that, to create the bridge. But afterwards, the roots have to grow thicker, so they could uh, stand the, withstand the, the weight of the people, of many people walking on it, and uh, it takes some more years. But these trees, that this bridge is made with living trees, they can last for, for maybe a hundred years. And this is an amazing way to use a natural material that it grows naturally, but the human intervention make it, makes it work as, it, as the people want it to work, and not as it works naturally. Okay, Cherapunji is more than 8,000 kilometers from the Basque Country, and especially it has uh, an annual average rainfall of 12,000 millimeters, compared to the uh, 1,700 1, millimeters we have in the Basque Country. And that's a very a huge difference. To put you in perspective, London has an average of 600 millimeters, and Brighton about 750 millimeters. So, I know that as uh, Mark has told that I, I come from northern Spain, I will say I come from the Basque Country. I don't feel Spanish <laughs> at all. <laughs> and uh, you, you, have, you will have felt about a dry place, but it's not. This is a picture from, from in front of my house, taken a couple of weeks ago. And uh, living in a place like this, we, we have a lot of wood around, and uh, carpentry is a very traditional system. And we are also very fond of cycling, especially my brother, more than me, but I also have ridden the bike quite often. And uh, we're also mountaineers, also especially my, my, my brother. <laughs> and uh, we, were, we spent a lot of years thinking about why don't make a bicycle with wood, but uh, why a wooden make bicycle cannot be as good as a steel, steel bicycle or aluminum bicycle or even, even a, a, carbon, a carbon frame. And uh, we spent a lot of years thinking about it, but at, uh, not, we were in a moment, no moment we decided to, to try it. And uh, what we said was that uh, wood is a really great natural composite material. It's formed by cellulose fibers that are, uh, well, in some places you can read that they are stronger than carbon fibers. We haven't made that test, and we have, don't have the five figures for that, but, and they are bound by lignin, the same way as uh, carbon or Kevlar fibers are linked by epoxy resins. The difference is that the wood is an already made uh, composite. You get it made, not as carbon or Kevlar, that you get the fibers, you put them in the shape you, you need, in the orientation you need, and then you use epoxy to, to fix it, to harden it. So, we had to figure out a way to, to orientate the fibers of the wood in the right direction. And also, we, we knew that we had to make the, the frame hollow because uh, 
If not, it's not hollow, it will be so heavy that it was not going to be useful. There are other manufacturers of wooden bikes, and some of them, they are also good, but not, I have to admit it. Some of them, <laughs> some of them, they are, they make uh, the, the glue, the straight pieces of wood between them. Then they, they make two halves. They, they root them from the outside, they root them from the inside to make it hollow, then they glue them together. But in some parts of the bike, they, they don't have the fibers orientated in the right direction. So they, put, they have to put a bit more of material on it or to put some steel or aluminum pieces on it. There are other manufacturers that make just, uh, they steam bend the, the wood so the, the fibers can get the shape the, they need. But uh, they don't make it hollow. They make it uh, it's in one piece it's, it, and they get it super very heavy. So we, we ended up making the, the frames with a micro laminated wood. As we, want, we needed to make it uh, hollow, uh, we, you cannot, we couldn't, you, we didn't have much margin for, for error. So we, if we laminate the wood with steam, with steam the, the wood expands when it gets wet and we, when it gets dry again it changes the, again the shape. So we needed to make the, the, thin, the, the walls of the tubes, the, this, at the end this is hollow, and as, to make it the, as lightest as possible, we had to make it very thin. And if, the, if we steam bend it, steam bend it, it uh, we have to root it afterwards from the outside to get it in the correct shape, but we, we didn't have that margin. So we, we had to make it dry and cold. So to, make, to bend the wood dry, you have to have very, very thin laminas, and with that you, you can bend it, it's much more work, you can make it hollow, and uh, it doesn't change the shapes. So these are the first, well, actually the second prototypes we made. This is actually the one I'm, I'm writing sometimes. I don't have much time as I have uh, small children. <laughs> and th this was the, the first, proto proto the second prototype we made. Not, not, this was not uh, already a prototype. It was the, the real bike already. And meanwhile, was I have said that we are mountaineers also, and we live in an area with uh, hills, but also mountains, and we have a very strong uh, mountaineering traditions. And uh, we thought about to make a wooden trucking pole. And okay, well, wooden stick is not uh, nothing innovative, but uh, we wanted to it to make it to be telescopic, and that's a bit more difficult. And we wanted to be light, stiff, and uh, able to be used in any mountain in the world. So uh, the first challenge we had was, well, the first thing was that uh, the upper part had to be hollow to house the, house the well, this is the, the pole. You have to house the, the lower part inside, so this had to be hollow. But this is that easy. You make two shells, you glue them together, and you have the tube. You cannot make a solid wood, and you cannot make a drill all through. That's very complicated. But to, you have to be able, well, I think I'm going to let this on the floor. It has to be telescopic, so you have to be able to fix it some, anywhere in the, in the range of the extension. So you, you need an expander inside it to fix it. And if this is only wood, in the first turn of the, of the lower part, the expander will crack the wood. So we needed to find a solution for that. And uh, for that, we had to, or, as the fibers of the wood are orientated longitudinally in the wood, we had to find a way to orientate them the other way. And it will be also great if we would, we would be able to orientate them diagonally also for torsion. Uh, it was very difficult to orientate wood fibers in that way. You need uh, very thick walls to make a plywood. So we decided to use fibers inside it, but natural fibers. We, we, from the beginning, we. We didn't want to use carbon fibers or Kevlar fibers, not because they are better or worse, but it was not with our philosophy. And we developed a technology to use natural fibers, especially uh, hemp fiber and also jute fibers, because they have a different properties for um, uh, expanding of, with moisture and things like that. And uh, we, are, we uh, developed a technology to introduce them in the pipe in the right direction. Some of the fibers perpendicular to the, 
going, going around the, the tube and some others diagonally. And so we have a trekking pole that uh, doesn't break when it's expanding, it's light. But we wanted to test it before launching it to the market. And uh, last spring, uh, a team of four people, including my brother, was, uh, went to the uh, bro uh, McKinley Mountain in Alaska. It's the highest mountain in North America. And it's uh, supposedly the coldest mountain in the world. So the team of four, they all brought the, the wooden poles. They reached the summit. They were dragging uh, sledges full of 40 kilos of gear with the, with the poles. And later on, on summer, another team went to the Gasherbrum 2, Gasherbrum 1 mountain. They didn't reach the summit, but this is one of the poles that have been mo both in the McKin McKinley and in the Gasherbrum mountain. So they have returned in one piece, also the climbers, not only the, the poles. <laughs> and, uh, well, this is uh, how it, we developed the, the trekking pole. It's tested and it works fine, even in minus, minus 40 degrees temperatures. Because it was, for us, it was also very important that it wouldn't get brittle it, with the cold and it wouldn't bend when you forget it in a hot summer day in the, in the sun. And afterwards, we, we integrated the, the technology of the, of the fibers. We call it Tethunt technology. Tethunt means fiber in Basque, and the T comes for, from nothing, nowhere, just for fun. <laughs> and we integrated it in the, in the way of making the bikes. So we could get much thinner walls to the, to the tubes. We could get uh, a lighter bike, stiffer one. We could make thicker tubes with thinner walls. So it's stiffer, lighter. Now we can say that we have the, the lighter wooden bike in the market. And as far as I know, the only telescopic is a trekking pole, wooden trekking pole in the market. And this process of, uh, it has taken a lot of years, this process of de developing these technologies, it's slow. We cannot survive only doing this, but now we are seeing its results. And I'm here because we are seeing its results. <laughs> that's, that's clear. And what next? We, are, we have already prepared the first, uh, the first wooden, not trekking poles, but walking poles, walk, walking sticks for elder people or disabled people. It's the same technology, but it's, uh, the handle is different. The tip is more simple, it's rubber. So it's a bit cheaper, but it's much more elegant than an uh, aluminum one. And it's telescopic, so you can fold it or you can adjust it to the, to the length you need. We have also changed the, the, this pole. Now it's a bit thicker, so it's a bit better grab, and it's uh, lighter than the old one. And we have also a mountain bike in the market. We have launched it, the first ones. And what about an ice axe? That uh, it's much, mm, but the same st as stiff as an aluminum one, but when you are enduring minus 20 or minus 40 degrees by below zero temperature, it's much warmer for your hand. Well, this is at the top of the McKinley, so you see that we have tested it. Skarigasko. Thank you very much.